Recently, there's been a lot of improvements to the deployment experience for SQL Server on Azure Virtual Machines. Learn all about it and see some examples this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined by Aditya and Pam, members of the Azure SQL Virtual Machine team. Folks, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks, Anna. It's great to be here, as always. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Anna. I'm really excited to be here. Saw so many data exposed videos as customer, now I'm seeing like this, and being part of it is really exciting. Awesome, yeah, we're excited to have you both on the show. And today we're gonna to be talking about a new and improved deployment experience for SQL Server running on Azure Virtual Machines. And uh, from what I understand, there's not just one or two, there's actually like a, quite a few number of updates here. And before we get into those updates, uh, I'd love like the inside look, maybe Pam, you could tell us like why you are going to share the updates and why you invested in the updates that we have today. Sure, yeah. So um, over the uh, past couple of years that we've been um, running the SQL VM side of the house, um, we've gotten tons of feedback about how we could make things better. And we've been saying that using a marketplace image is the easiest way to deploy a SQL VM, because when you do that, you get all the best practices and everything's kind of pre-configured for you. And it's really the easiest way to get you, you know, from zero to running on a SQL VM. But we heard from customers and from the community that there were um, there were like settings that they wanted to change and there was configurations that they needed access to that they couldn't get through the marketplace deployment experience. So we spent a lot of time over the last several months um, just kind of implementing lots of different uh, features and settings so that that deployment experience is, is as robust as possible so that everyone can take advantage of the marketplace images. Cool, awesome. I love that you know the things we invest in are things that people are asking for. It, it makes a ton of sense. Um, Aditya, why don't you tell us a little bit about some of these updates and maybe even we can take a look. Yep, sure. So uh, I'll give you a, a brief overview to start with, right? So uh, the important updates that we did is the, as Pam mentioned, uh, the deployment experience that is creating uh, marketplace images. And uh, as as Pam mentioned, and uh, this is we got so much feedback from the community, from the customers, and we tried to implement them. And the important fact that we tried to do is to create the on-prem kind of experience. Like when you go do a SQL Server setup as a customer, you do you do see so many settings, and we do want to bring all those settings back into the while you are deploying the marketplace image. Hmm. That's our main intention to do it. And How about uh, I just, um, maybe I should just create a VM? Yeah, please go ahead okay. and do it. Uh, let me walk you through that. Okay. So if you are in SQL Virtual Machines tab and do, do that, you directly go here and pick a, pick a, yeah, pick an image, yeah, create. Okay. So, Let's not really go and fill in every details. You can directly sure. skip the SQL Server settings tab. I'll just give it a name and oh, oh, but I do want to tell everybody about the new VM sizes that you can. <laughs> <laughs> Mine defaults to the E8 DSV5 because that's my favorite baseline VM. <laughs> We talked about those in another video, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's just skip to the so so just. All of these settings are kind of um, for VMs themselves. So if you just deployed a VM that's not a SQL VM, you'd have most of these tabs. The one that's different for a SQL VM is the SQL Server settings. So yeah. we, we can leave everything at the default and just skip to that one, right? Yes, yes. So when you come here and when you look at uh, the SQL Server settings tab, right? So previously also you have the SQL Server settings tab, but we kind of um, changed so many things in this tab to start with storage configuration. If you click on storage configuration and change configuration, you would see a new the tab that that's going to display is kind of changed completely. Previously, you would have seen a OLTP, OLAP, all different tabs, but we said, okay, let's not really differentiate in anything. Let's make it simple. Let's make it as equal as on-prem deployment. Now you can essentially change 
all your system databases from C data to F data. It's a this, popular yeah. ask. Yeah, this was a huge one. I remember this. So we don't yeah. want our system databases to be on the OS drive. So if we click this. Yeah. And, right. and automatically it will change to the data drive. Mm -hmm. And this this data drive uh, is deployed through, through storage pool. So it, all the system databases except MDB <laughs> kind of goes to F data. And mm -hmm. you... When you change, you can change the IOPS. You can input whatever uh, 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 storage type, disk type that you want. This is all that you have yeah. previously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so if I change the number of disks here, I'll just change it to two. Then it's going to automatically create a storage pool for me, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That's right. And the uh, TempDB, the, the same applies with log storage. And one one important thing that most people doesn't know is when you configure storage via uh, marketplace image, the caching, the host caching is automatically enabled for all the data disks. So how cool is that, right? So we, we kind of do it uh, directly from uh, when you when you do configure storage and do a storage pool deployment from the marketplace image. And for the log, we know we, we shouldn't have. So log, when you do a log pool, log storage pool, you will not have host caching enabled, but if host caching is enabled, when you do for the data drives, which is the best practice. And if you come to TempDB storage, you will see uh, number of files, initial size, and auto growth. Why we did that way? The thing is, you know, right? Like the best practice of TempDB is to have all the files equal size. So please remember this statement. I, I'm going to get back to the statement again uh, when we go for the management. Yeah. Uh, and management. actually, I, eight megabytes is usually too small. I'm going to make this 1024. So yep. I'm going to have eight files that are all one gig each. Yep. And, and I'm going to make it grow at half yep. a gig. Yep. <laughs> Bam. No one knows better best practices of him. Yeah, yep, I'm gonna do the same thing here. My log file doesn't need to be that big, but I'm gonna do the same. There we go. Yep, yep. And uh, that that's that's all the storage uh, configuration and simple. Yep. That's this is how you kind of do it in your on-prem and everything. So, and then let's come down to the instance settings, right? Those are the other ones that. Yes. Yes. This is again a new improvement, right? So. Um, uh, Anna, this is something that we have got as a the new deployment, which is now you can configure your max job, you can change your collation, which is a big thing, huge ask, mm -hmm. again, from the community and the customers. We want to change um, uh, the, our collation to a different collation. You can change your max job to a different setting. I'm going to change it to eight because there's eight cores on the system. Eight cores, yep. And uh, can you change it to 18? Just like it's oh, an exceeds. Yeah, you wow. see? So we have some best oh, practices cool. in there. Yeah. So we, yeah. we have kind of improved. We, so it's not just the deployment experience. We are kind of guiding you um, when you're deploying your instance with all the best practices that uh, a SQL Server has. And why we know it? Because uh, SQL Server is Microsoft product, right? So, <laughs> and uh, min server memory, max server memory, as as we know, uh, we have uh, the the integer values, uh, the default mm -hmm. values. And we started with one of the best practices, which is optimized for ad hoc workload. We know that all of our customers, by default, do optimize for ad hoc workload mm -hmm. as a best practice, but it is opt out as in, uh, we want you to choose it. It is IaaS offering, right? So it's your machine. You would choose what is best for you. This so is one that's yeah. almost all upside and not much downside. So <laughs> that's a good <laughs> one to have here. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So that is okay. the instance uh, settings that we have for um, marketplace images. And Great. And I think everything else is pretty much the same, right, Aditya? Yeah. Remaining everything else is pretty much okay. the same. I'm going to go ahead so, and cancel this then. So we yeah. don't actually deploy. Yeah, them. I have created. I have already created uh, a machine. All right. So let's go over purpose. to the one that you created, Aditya. So here's the. So so what's new? Um, if you've already got an existing VM, what's new here? Okay. So now, <clears throat> because we have deployed everything um, with the best practices, we we want you to continue those best practices here too. To start with, uh, if you click on configure pan, 
Previously, you used to see your storage configurator in this blade uh, right before mm -hmm. the addition. Yep. Now that came up down as a separate yep. tab called Definitely. storage configuration. Right, let's click that. Where you have data, log, and TempDB, where you can click click on configure of TempDB. Okay, configure TempDB. And TempDB configuration. Ah, this is new, oh, wow. new blade altogether. Now, if you see, uh, there is a pop up that is there out there yep. saying, the size of TMDB files are not even. We recommend configuring all TMDB file size equal. So mm -hmm. what I did is I manually went into the virtual machine and I said I changed one of the file size to 15 mm. instead of 8 MB. Now, which 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 essentially means you might you want we are telling you please do configure with all the sizes equal sizes and automatically that comes to a larger value which is initial size is populated with larger value. Mm -hmm. So all you all you need to do is configure TMDB files, how many number of files, and you need to input the initial size and apply, and it will go ahead and deploy uh, with that. Hit, so hit so when I click apply here, this it will, will tell you yeah. what is what is that you are reconfiguring re reconfiguring to, and yes, go ahead. And now is that going to restart my SQL Server instance no, or anything? It doesn't. No. no. It doesn't. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, we can resize TempDB on the fly. So that's yep. great. Cool. So, so that is, that is while that is deploying, I will kind of tell you the other uh, other improvements, right? So mm -hmm. the other improvements are the backup, in, automated backup improvements. So <clears throat> we, we have heard that, um, uh, that in automated backup is one of the uh, feature that most of our customers love, right? So uh, people wanted to uh, uh, in initiate backups uh, and do instance backups, uh, uh, simple backups. No, it is not a solution which will give you um, a full-blown backup solution. For that, you have Azure Backup. But if you want to go ahead and deploy something which is simple, we have this automated backup solution. What this this automated backup solution does is it will go ahead and deploy the instance wide backups. Now we have added two new features to this uh, automated backup. One is we increase the retention period. Previously we used to do only 30 days retention period. Now it is 90 days retention period. And also one other uh, important thing that we did is um, previously you have you have to do select a storage account and only the storage account. You can't select a container of it. Now, uh, if you want to, with this new deployment, you can select a container in the storage account, which will make the manageability easier. So Pam, can you refresh? Yeah, it's done. So can you go to storage configuration again? Yeah, sure. Click on configure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything is resized to factory. Great. Perfect. And the warning message is gone. So which means yep. we are we are awesome. now right now with best practices. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, let's go to backups now because okay. I'll go ahead and enable this so we can see what you were talking about with the storage account. So. Yeah. See, retention period. Yep. Is you can go now. You can yep. get get to ninety days. Uh, yep. And uh, this is this is again uh, from the feedback from the mm -hmm. uh, uh, community customers and everything. Whereas in storage accounts, yeah, click on AD Badram test or some something like that, whatever. Yeah, sure. Previously, the experience used to stop there. Now you can now we can create, create a new container yeah. or use the container that you already have. So if I I could create like a data, I'm not going to go ahead and create this, but I could create a container just for this VM. Yes. In case I wanted to keep them separate. Okay, for now yes. I'm just going to choose your container. Yes, yes. because this this makes the this makes entire um, manageability experience easier, yeah. and uh, uh, you can you can differentiate between this VM's backups to other VM's backups, so on right. and so forth. Very um, cool. Yeah. And also, I really want to talk about the SQL assessment here. Um, Ebru might have. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is an exciting new feature. I, I'm really excited for this to come out. To uh, yes. it's in preview right now. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So this is this is this is one feature which which gives all the best practices, mm -hmm. right? Um, and we we have we also have done 
few other modifications where security comes under security configuration and Microsoft Defender Cloud as a separate unit. Microsoft Defender gives all you you see all the best practices for uh, best practices when it pertains to SQL Server from security point of view. Assessment gives all the best practices for performance point of view, configuration point of view, deployment point of view. And lastly, this is way well less known feature, which is repair button. Uh, just because oh, if you have, yeah. This, this can come in really handy if something yes. goes wrong with your IaaS extension, right? Yeah, oh, if something goes with your IaaS agent extension, you can go ahead and repair from here. Yeah. So, that's pretty much about it. What all this comes to and what all we are kind of doing is enabling customers uh, to run SQL Server with the extreme performance and extreme performance way. And this also proves and this also gets to the statement that me, Pam, kind of uh, elude in every, every seminar and every blog that we talk that is Azure is the best place to run your SQL Server. So that, so. <laughs> That's about it, and we are really looking forward for more feedback, and we are really looking forward for um, making your SQLs uh, run more better in our platforms. Awesome, love it, and you know, just to conclude, some of the things that I thought were really cool is from the storage configuration side that you saw us for new deployments. What's interesting is we have all the control to change the things we want to change, but also the best practices and those warnings. So even if you're not exactly sure you know, you're there whether we want all the help or we want none of the help. Uh, yeah. So that's been really cool. I also love with the the new experience for backups, how uh, I can even create a container right there. I don't yeah. have yeah. to like leave the experience, go create a container. I can do it all in one place. And I'm sure these are things that have come up from customers and that's why y'all are doing it. It's great yeah. to see these updates for SQL assessments. We have another episode on that. So uh, yeah, I was going to ask about that. Yeah, did you guys, um, you're going to do an episode? Yeah, yeah. so for our viewers, definitely stay tuned and, and follow this series, the Azure SQL VM series, because we're always posting new updates. Uh, this team is always doing great stuff. Uh, Aditya, Pam, thanks so much for being on the show today. Uh, for our viewers, thanks for joining us. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think of all these updates and what you want to see next. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. Thank you.